Hey guys, Ryan here. Well, today's the big day. I'm cooking up that brisket with Roland. He's behind the camera. Say hello, Roland. Hello. There you go. So today I've got my bulk standard ingredients. I've done my own research on uh, Texas brisket recipes. But to start off, we have our handy dandy uh, special water. One moment, I need uh, some fuel. Ah, it will melt the shell of a garden snail. That's some strong water there. <laughs> That's some strong water. Yes, it is special water. So we've got the uh, we've got the smoker building up heat as we speak. I've got the brisket that's already um, uh, cooled off. Uh, I've kept it in the freezer for a couple of days. Now this right here is the United States of America brisket. This is three kilos of prime U.S. beef. I'm proud to have it in my hands. That sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first off, though, we've got to do is I need to carve off this excess layer of fat so it can cook one for one thing a little bit faster but I also have to make it more aerodynamic when it comes to actually smoking the thing because I do not want uh, it, it to be rough edges and then those uh, become really hard and so I got to carve it off with a decent knife and just render and then later on we'll render that fat and use it as tallow for when we've finally smoked this thing through the halfway process when we need to wrap it. But first off, the bog standard main ingredients that you're gonna have for any Texas barbecue recipe. I'm gonna start off with some mustard. We've got two different mustards here. I'm gonna um, uh, add water. I'm gonna make a mixture of mustard and water to, to, to create a base for the brisket once I've carved it down. And so then, the spices here can stick to the meat better. And I'm not gonna rub in the seasoning, I'm just gonna place bonk it on there. So I've got um, I've got I've got Himalayan salt. I mean I, I have what I have. <laughs> uh, I have salt, I have Himalayan salt, I have garlic powder, I have uh, the black peppers and the chunks, and we have the more powdery-ish uh, pepper. So for now, I'm going to uh, prepare the mustard. Well, actually not prepare the mustard. First off, I'm going to start carving down this bad boy. Once the smoker has reached a decent temperature, I'm going to start carving this bad boy down. And then I can apply the spices, leave it sit for a moment, and then we're going to plonk it right on to the smoker once it has reached temperature. I'll get back to you guys soon. Guys, just sharpening the knife here, getting ready. The, uh, the uh, smoker is coming up to temperature. So for now, I am going to cut off this, uh, cut off the excess fat. Like I said earlier, I'm going to render it down later to use it for tallow that we will, we will later reuse on this brisket. Now, this is a specific cut of the brisket. You have, essentially, you have two cuts of a bulk standard brisket. And today we're working with the lean side of the brisket. Uh, the other, the other portion of the brisket is referred to as the moist part of the brisket. So, like I said earlier, I got to cut off uh, the excess uh, fat of this brisket. So I'm going to be cutting down there. As you can see, it's quite thick there. And when I get down to a certain level, I'm going to see how thick it is. If I just go grab it, and if I can still feel some fat on it, if, not, if I'm not feeling enough meat, then we're going to take it further from there. So at the very least, this is my first time doing this, so it might be a botched job, but we'll see. That's some great sound effects. Yeah, that's a nice cut. Don't know if you guys are hearing this through the camera, but it's a nice cutting sound. And like I said earlier, I'm going to make this thing aerodynamic, like a car. Just so I don't get tough bits, well not tough bits, but like, like roasted pieces. I want it all even. But to be fair, I'm not working with the best piece. Not saying this is a bad piece of meat, but because I've had this in the freezer, and the unfreezing process 
it has a fifth dimension some type of way, so that's just something I'm going to have to deal with. Um, doesn't matter though, my first brisket doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be good. And perfect is the enemy of good. Yes it is, definitely. Alright. Professionals, I have seen, especially with uh, Goldie's Barbecue, you might want to look that up. It's a uh, particular video, uh, a day in the life of the number one Texas barbecue. And in that video they state they can, some of them have done, I won't say record attempts, but uh, some of them have boasted they can do it under a minute, a full brisket, that's six kilos of meat, under a minute carving off the extra excess fat. So that takes time, that takes years of knowing what you're doing, knowing what you're looking for. When can we expect the Barbecue Olympics? <laughs> there have already been some type of, some, something, something like that. They do have something on Netflix, I believe, like a barbecue competition. So over here it's quite fatty as well. I can just pull that back a bit. Yeah, it's looking a bit fatty there as well, so... Cutting off all that excess. You're reaching the meat now. Right. Let's see here. Let's see what I'm looking at. That's, that's all fat there. And that, then you got the meat joining right up to here, so the meat's right there. So I'm going to cut down on the fat on this end, while still making it aerodynamic. Alright, well, I'll leave it here because no doubt you're probably getting bored at this point, me cutting up, <laughs> cutting up a piece of bloody meat. So I'll get back to where it's done to my uh, satisfaction. Okay. Hey guys, so I have now cut the brisket down to size. I have prepared my seasonings and now it's time to put the seasonings on said brisket. The smoker is up to temperature. I'm going to say I'm actually quite surprised I got it to the right temperature. I don't know this. I don't know this beast, but somehow I got it to the right temperature. I have no idea why. I just did. I just felt it. I don't know. Instinct. Instinct. I guess. I guess. So first off, I'm going to apply some mixture of mustard and water. Put some Dijon and, and French's mustard. French's not French's mustard. Is there French mustard? And Dijon. Dijon is pretty French. Okay. Well, it was the two mustards that you had, so I just put them together. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put this on the meat itself. Because I, 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 what from what I've seen of Texas barbecues doing it, they use like a squirty bottle to to put the mustard uh, mustard liquid on there. And what this is going to do, I think I said this earlier, it's going to create a base for the seasoning to stick upon. So you get get it on there because I'm going to hit it from all the angles. I'm going to yeah surround it. Surround it exactly. Now, I've also heard from these uh, videos uh, to not coat the bottom of the brisket in the mustard or seasonings because it's just going to come off the barbecue anyways. Huh. Makes sense. So, yeah. So, that looks honestly pretty damn good. Yep. First off. So... There are some chefs who say, first put it in your hand and then on the food. What do you say to them? I probably agree with them. <laughs> okay. But more, I'm, I'm, to be fair, I am working with individual seasonings. It's not a one-on-one -on -one ratio with how I'm uh, applying it. I'll probably yeah. use a little bit of mustard, too much mustard there. Oh, it doesn't matter. We're also running on instinct here we are, quite a bit. This is, this, this is the first brisket we're attempting. Uh, if it turns out shot, it turns out shot. Uh, I, I'm also just running on this thing here, just, just thinking. <laughs> maybe it's too wet, maybe it's too wet, well, it's definitely a little, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. You can only know after your first one. Yeah, exactly, this is, this is just like, okay, how do we figure this shit out? If I had, I should have brought my, I should have brought along my SPG, I should have brought, it, should have brought that along. But I'm up to right now. Going. 
Oh, that's broken. That's actually oh. fucking broken. What, uh, what ingredient is that? That's pepper. That's ah. uh, four season pepper. I think, yeah, the other might be better. But, oh, no. Actually, those are some nice chunks. Yeah, that's actually pretty that's, good, actually. This is I mean, very all, good pepper. That's all of it. <laughs> that's literally all of it. That's literally all of it. Just add that pepper to it. Well, people believe it's the pepper that makes it look dark and rich when it comes to briskets. It's not. It's a slow smoking process. It is absolutely the slow smoking process. Move it to the sides. I am a meter away and I can smell delicious pepper from here. <laughs> and it's also hot as shit in here. So uh, Ryan is really uh, having a hard time, but for you, for the viewer, he's doing this. Yep, I'm doing it for the viewers. Now we've got a nice, easy salt here. Get the sides, get the sides, get the sides. And no. How do you know uh, what is enough? When you feel it's enough. Huh. Once again, I am working purely on instinct. I don't have the perfect. If I had my SPG here, which once again I should have brought, it's by a combination of salt, pepper, garlic from um, uh, the Van Bacon Spice uh, Spice Yeah. Van Bacon Spice Ryan. They do uh, uh, something called a salt, pepper, garlic mixture and put into the right uh, container. It, this would have worked out, honestly, a lot better. Not, not saying anything about Roland's <laughs> seasonings, but in honesty, I should have brought that along. Well, I also have a Van, Van Bacon box, but it's for pulled pork. So yeah, I saw that. Fair enough, fair enough. But we are ultimately improvising here, but I'm yeah. confident it will work out anyways. Yeah. And we'll see how it's honestly going to work out. Okay, so now I've done what I honestly can with what I have. Not, not going to complain. It's looking <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, now beer boy feel good. So now it's at a good temperature. It's just above uh, 100 degrees or just above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. 100 Celsius, of course. We have some mushrooms in here that are slow roasting because we want to see how that turns out. And now I'm going to place the brisket one, two, this one, okay. That's the last time you'll see it until it's done. Well, halfway through and we've got to wrap it. But I'll get to that point when we get to that point. Thanks. Hey guys. So, uh, we have the brisket on the barbecue, on, on the smoker over there. And now uh, we're frying up some mushrooms. Uh, salt, pepper, garlic, and parsley. So coming along with this, we're using uh, butter from the store, and as well as uh, some of the tallow from the brisket itself. So pour that on there, and uh, no doubt uh, the dog likes it. There you go. Come on, come on. There you go. <laughs> he likes it. He likes it. So, fire these up. They'll be good to go soon. Salt, pepper, garlic. And hopefully in the next hour, we can check on the biscuit. Hey everyone. So, uh, currently the brisket has been on for 2 hours and 20 minutes, roughly. So now this is going to be my first look at it. We have not peaked yet. So this is a true reaction to what I'm about to see. All right, here we go. It's not bad. Still needs to go longer. Still definitely needs to go longer. But we'll keep going and see what happens. We had put some mushrooms on earlier. 
see how they would turn out. Let's take them out for, uh, shall we take them out for now? Uh, yeah. We take them out mushrooms. Right. See how those are. Put some salt and pepper and garlic on those, see how they turn out. But for now, this is going to go for longer. Right. That's it. Hey guys, we're back at the brisket. Um, I'll be honest with you, we've been checking back and forth on how it's looking. Um, the temperature has gone down at certain times, so we've had to come back, fire fire up the, the, the coals again to get it to a, the proper heat. And now it's um, at the certain time, it's not the perfect time, but a certain time we're now going to wrap it in the paper. You mind? Uh, yep. So we have this butcher paper here. Uh, American barbecuists have recommended butcher's paper over foil because it uh, uh, retains the, the, the flavors and the juices of the meat. Now, this could go longer for now before wrapping it, but there will come a time when it comes to the stall phase in which the juices will start to evaporate from the meat itself and causing it to be more dry than than what we want. So it's, all, it's already sort of well done. Well done is about 170 Fahrenheit. Um, but of course we're operating above uh, 200 right now about, uh, right now it's sitting at about um, 2, 280. It's a little bit high. Uh, maybe should have been, uh, to be fair, we, ha we have been, this is really just guesswork right at this point. It's, yeah. So, and it's a hundred Celsius, round yeah. about, uh, for viewers at home. No, no, it's about almost 150. 150? Almost 150, so it's about oh, uh, yeah, two, it two, 290 Fahrenheit. But it used to be 110 uh, Yeah, rough, roughly 110, 220, that's, uh, that's uh, decent degrees. But for now, we're going to take it off, put it on the butcher paper, wrap it in the butcher paper. We have Roland on hand with another sheet <laughs> to wrap it on second. Just so we retain uh, the, all the moisture. So here we go. Yeah. So this is what look. Get it in. Have a look. This is what we got so far. So this is about uh, is about uh, an hour and a half uh, from the last video. So here we go. In total, about five hours. Yep. Basically. So we wrap it. One sec. One sec. Hold it there. Keep filming. <laughs> Keep filming. This is off script, people. Keep filming. Yes. I forgot this. The tallow. The tallow. We need this. This is the off cuts from uh, the initial cutting process of the of the fat. Yeah, it's been simmering for the same five hours. Yeah, it's, it's literally been simmering for the same five hours. We pour it on there. Cover it a bit. Wrap it. And roll on. On top. There we go. Come on, come on, you bastard. He's <laughs> resisting. Resistance is futile. It is. Alright. Nope, not done, not done, not done. Come on, come on, you bastard. Come on. Alright. Ultimately, that ain't bad. It's not bad. It's all contained. And now, we put it back in the smoker and let it cook further. Now with the wrapping process it does speed up the time in which it cooks and so we'll check back in about maybe two hours or so maybe less depending but we'll see what happens. For now let's put it back in. And just that. We can do another layer. We could do another layer. Could do another layer. Another one. Highly unorthodox. Highly unorthodox. 
but we're essentially taking drastic measures here. We don't know what we're doing, to be fair. Now first brisket. Yeah. <laughs> we can put a pin in it. <laughs> we could put a pin. <laughs> this is the brilliance of making your first ever brisket, finding out what the fuck to do. This is what we're gonna do, I'm gonna flip it. I'm just gonna fucking flip it. Okay. Perfect. That's really as much as you're gonna get. And there we go. It's currently sitting at, uh, I would say 380, 380 bollocks, 280, sorry. It's currently sitting at 280 Fahrenheit, uh, roughly uh, 130 uh, Celsius. And uh, we'll get back to you soon. Hello uh, guys, so uh, we have taken the brisket off of the smoker, uh, to be fair with you. Uh, this is not the perfect brisket, I will admit that. And no doubt Roland and Esco can admit that as well. It's not, it, it's not of Texas standard, but it is the first brisket that me and Roland have done. And we have done our best attempt at it. No doubt the next will be better. But for now, uh, we have, me and Roland, uh, taken a slice out of the brisket already. Just to see if we need to put it in longer. Because it is, to be fair, getting a bit late. And so, um, norm normally a brisket that you probably see on, say, these Texas barbecue videos. They're going to be a lot darker, to be fair. They're probably running about 12, 13 hours. Fair enough. But we have done what we can. So there, there are juices in the meat, this and that. No problem. Whatever. But, Elska, <laughs> since you have not tried the brisket yourself, I would like an honest opinion. Don't don't give me some bullshit. Oh, I love it. Oh, the umami <laughs> flavor. No, I want, I want I want a genuine response from you. So here we go. <laughs> so first off let's get a look it's actually quite cold well, it's still quite hot but let's look at that see all the juices in there it's not no no <laughs> no so it, uh, normally it should have a decent bark on there there is no decent bark on there i'm not i'm definitely going to admit that it's not a proper brisket whatever but uh elska hand me the phone there you go and there you go okay <laughs> that's it Honest opinion, come on. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Five to eight hours over lunch, people. <laughs> it's good. Mm. What does Midas think? Not too dry. Oh, no, no. <laughs> there should not be that. It should not be. To, to, to be fair, people, it should not be uh, uh, yeah, tough to pull. It, it should take another four hours, so to speak. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it's well. good. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Okay. <laughs> yep. back. Uh. So, for my own personal opinion, I've already <laughs> tried this, but. This is the first meat that I've honestly put this time and dedication into making. Um, does it need work? Yes. Does it need improvement? Yes. Can I do better? Yes. Um, I'm looking forward to the future. And I wish to provide the people around me with this type of cut. Not this specific cut, because this is my first ever brisket, 
but I wish to provide the people around me with good meat and good good fellowship and all and all that good stuff, no doubt. So yeah, there we go. And not only the people, but also the dogs. All the dogs. <laughs> there we go. There you go. There you go. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, shouldn't be doing that. Should pull away right away. Should yeah. pull away right away. Not doing that. But still, it's delicious. It's still good, no doubt. Still good. But yeah, first attempt. Not the worst. Not the best. The only way is up. The only way is up. Well, there's yeah. also a down, but we won't get there. No, <laughs> we'll go up. Exactly. Thank you very much for watching these videos. I'll see you again soon.